South matchup here in Atlanta. The New Orleans Saints are in town to take on the home team. The Atlanta Falcons a record of six and six. The Saints an undefeated 12 and 0. And now welcome to the broadcast booth everybody. I am Joe Buck. That's Troy Aikman. Pam Oliver is coming right up. Well here are the Saints 12 and 0 and rolling. The 12 and 0 record has not been put together however without a couple of scares. And that includes last week as they got out of D.C. with a victory over the Redskins and here today Troy take on a very banged up Atlanta Falcon team. A yeah, close game last week for New Orleans fortunate to win but I think Sean Payton was able to use that to get this team refocused. Typically you can't do that as a coach until you lose a ball game. Of course they're still banged up in the secondary defensively. That is a concern going into this ball game. Offensively though you're dealing with the number one offense. Drew Brees is healthy playing great. Hard to imagine them not putting up a lot of points here today. Falcons got off to that great start four and one but they've hit the skids and here today they're again without two of their big offensive stars. Second year quarterback Matt Ryan and maybe more importantly in some respect their leading rusher Michael Turner. Yeah I think so because the Falcons want to run the football and Michael Turner not being on the field is going to hurt them in doing that because they want to try to shorten the game and keep Drew Brees you know on the sidelines. However I think the real key for the Falcons in this ball game is turning the ball or take get takeaways defensively because if they don't get those it's hard to imagine them being able to hang in this ball game. We are approaching kickoff here in Atlanta. We continue with more but first this from the Verizon football zone. The top rated quarterback in the NFL Drew Brees getting ready for the Saints taking on Chris Redman. That's the quarterback matchup here this afternoon on Fox. Take a look at our UPS opportunities of the game for the New Orleans Saints. They have injuries. They have to overcome those injuries to defensive starters in their secondary in particular. And for the Falcons hold the Saints to field goals. Good luck. Those were this week's opportunities of the game delivered by UPS. Log on to FoxSports.com slash UPS for a chance to win a trip to Miami. When we come back, Pam Oliver will have a chat with head coach Sean Payton. Fox Sports welcomes you to the following presentation of the National Football League. The head coach of the undefeated New Orleans Saints is Sean Payton in his fourth year and he's standing by with Pam Oliver. Thanks a lot Joe. Sean Atlanta's a team that plays you guys very tough. What are some of the things on your list of priority the highest. Well the last time we played them a month ago we didn't do a good job protecting the football and we didn't do a good job defending the run. So those are two things we've talked about going into this game. We were able to come away with the win on a Monday night but playing here will be a lot tougher. Perfect. Thank you. Thanks Pam. Back to you Joe. All right Pam thank you and thanks to Sean Payton for stopping by for that chat the Atlanta Falcons won the toss they receive and so an early look at that offense there is Chris Redman Matt Ryan still out with turf toe Morstead will kick it away for the Saints and off we go line drive kick and one of the up men Aaron Stecker takes it. And Stecker can make it to the 25. That's it. 16 yard return. And here comes the offense with Redman, who makes his second consecutive start. He came on in relief of Matt Ryan against Tampa Bay a couple of weeks ago and led a comeback for a victory. Falcons lost last week. They're 6 and 6. And there's the offensive line, Troy, as they get Sam Baker back with his bad elbow. Yeah they get Sam Baker back which certainly helps them and they're still without their right guard Harvey Dahl so Quinno Janaka will be making the start again here today from the 25 and the Falcons start with a run and carrying it straight ahead is Jason Snelling for two yards defensively this is the 18th ranked defense in the NFL but. The stats individually are good. They're number one in interceptions, number one in fumble takeaways, number one in total takeaways, interceptions, returned for touchdowns, five. This is a team that really gets after the football. Yeah, I mean, we've seen offenses have some success moving the football. We saw that last week with the Redskins, but as you said, very opportunistic in creating takeaways. Start with two straight runs, and again, it's Snelling. Tries the left side a gain of five third and relatively short coming up for Atlanta the act the inactives and 
There are some big names on the two lists for the Saints. They're without Mike Bell, Scott Fujita, and without Porter and Greer, two corners. For the Atlanta Falcons, two of their stars on offense, Ryan and Turner, RV Dahl, their right guard, and their starting corner, Chris Houston, third and three. Good pocket for Redman, and it's Snelling again right up the middle of the field. Out of the backfield on third and three, and he's to the 30. A 38 yard catch and run for Jason Snelling. New Orleans Saints were in man coverage. They go with a bunch set. You're going to see Snelling here come out of the backfield, and they just turn him loose. They got linebacker coming over the top there, expecting Snelling to go to the flat, but they run a nice natural pick there that allows Snelling to come off of that action. And then be left uncovered. So 38 yards on third and three, and it's the Jason Snelling show. So far today on Fox, a gain of three, and you know the Atlanta Falcons would love nothing more than to pound it down into the end zone and get an early lead in their divisional rival, the undefeated Saints. Yeah, and we see Chris Redman here looking at the wristband. They have not used that in previous games. Of course, Matt Ryan does not use it. That's a good look at it there. There's 120 something plays that are on that wristband. You can see him going to it now. He says sometimes he calls it in the huddle and then and then forgets exactly what the play is as he's getting to the line of scrimmage. Second down and seven and the pass is caught. That's the fullback Mahaley. And Mahaley has enough for another Atlanta first down gain of eight. So go back to that wristband. For the first seven years that I was playing we did not have a wristband did not use that. And then in my eighth year we did and I found it very difficult to use and the reason is the same thing that Chris Redman has talked about is that you call the play in the huddle and you really don't start digesting what the play is that you just called until you start to get underneath center. But they felt that they needed to go to this to clean up some of the calls in the huddle. Handoff is to Norwood and Norwood gets nada. Jarius Norwood last week. 11 carries 18 yards against the Eagles just six carries 22 yards against Tampa Bay and he's been playing with a sore right hip he has a right hip flexor issue and they say he's getting healthier they need him to step up and fill the void left by Michael Turner and his high ankle sprain there's Mike Smith in his second year as the head coach here in Atlanta second and ten and off back to Snelling. And Snelling, who's been busy here on this first drive, gains two. Vilma on the stop for the Saints. Well, I think that's been one of the problems for this Atlanta team throughout this season, which you just touched on, Joe, and that has been the health of the running backs. I mean, whether it's been Jarius Norwood, he's missed a number of games, in fact, six games this year. And then, of course, Michael Turner now having missed three of the last four games. And, you know, those are awfully good players when they're in the lineup together and they complement each other so well but they've not run the football nearly as well as what we saw from them a year ago. Redmond throws the pass is dropped. Finneran couldn't hang on. Saints were looking for a false start. They shouldn't be. Will Smith comes away. It looked like there was a false start on Baker the left tackle but they should take and be happy with the result of the play a third down incompletion. Watch Baker at left tackle move prior to the snap. But no penalty flag, and so now a field goal try of 36 yards by Matt Bryant, his first with the Falcons. He was active last week, did not get a chance to attempt a field goal. And he pops it through. And so now the Saints, who have allowed 45 points, second most in the NFL. In the opening possession, they give up three and trail by three early. Today's game on Fox is sponsored by Southwest Airlines. Go to southwest.com, grab your bag, it's on. We will shortly see Drew Brees and this juggernaut of an offense go to work here in Atlanta. Snelling had five touches 50 yards on that opening possession and taking a knee is Roby. 
And we'll take a break. When we come back, it's the Saints starting from their 20 as they trail here in the first. Theresa. Today's game on Fox is sponsored by Bud Light. With the just right taste that's not too heavy, not too light, the difference is drinkability. There is Sean Payton in his fourth year as head coach with the Saints. He and Breeze took him to the NFC Championship in his first year in 06. Ducking through a tackle is Pierre Thomas. And a good run to start the day for the Saints. Seven yards over the left side. This is the number one offense in the NFL, just about any way you look at it. And this is an offense, Troy, in general, as you look at the starters and the faces. It has never been ranked lower than fourth across the NFL since Sean Payton took over in 06. <laughs> Yeah, they're first again this year. Three out of four years, they've been they've been the number one offense in the NFL, and they're doing it this year without their leading receiver from a year ago. Lance Moore has played very little, and that has allowed Robert Meacham to really emerge. First pass is complete to Shockey for a Saints first down out across the 35 to the 37, a gain of 10. And here is the defense in Troy. This, as we look at it, and it stacks front to back it's the back end and it's the secondary that really has to worry Mike Smith the Falcons head coach they are young and very thin back there well they're without their starter Chris Houston and you know when you get thin in the secondary and then you're playing the New Orleans Saints and they can go four and five guys out I mean somewhere there's a real matchup problem breeze throws and completes to Colston. Beautiful reaching grab by Marcus Colston in front of Deku, a gain of 20. And yeah, when you got Marcus Colston on a safety, Thomas Deku, I mean, they're going to like this matchup all day long. And you know, what a nice catch there by Marcus Colston. You get used to saying that about these Saints wide receivers. They were working on this exact same route in the pregame warmups. Just great execution. There's the season for Colston. Who's averaging over 17 yards per catch. And then a blink. The Saints are inside Falcon territory as they trail by three. Play action from Breeze, who backs up and hits Pierre Thomas. And Pierre Thomas takes it down the sideline, a missed tackle, and he's down inside the 20. Deku missed. And a gain of 25 on a catch and run by Pierre Thomas. Well, here's what happens. They go play action, and they're going to fake the handoff here to Pierre Thomas, and then he's going to come out. Now the Falcons are locked up in man coverage, and so the linebackers got to be able to come out and make this play. And if he's unable to, as we see, then he's off and running. John Abraham is the one who dropped into coverage and was trying to pick up Pierre Thomas, expecting that maybe Pierre Thomas would be staying in and blocking. But so far now we've seen Marcus Colston on a safety and then John Abraham trying to cover a back. Handoff is to Thomas right side and a good play is made by Deku. Deku's missed a couple on this opening possession. He could not slow down Marcus Colston enough on that big completion and then missed a tackle on Pierre Thomas this time. Behind the line of scrimmage, a loss of one. Well, Thomas Deku, he's been one of the bright spots for this defensive unit. You know, a guy who was pr predominantly a special teams player a year ago. They wanted to get younger at the safety position, and he's been pretty consistent. He's he's a good player for this team. Now, this time, this part of the field is where Mike Smith is very concerned. Says we we've got to hold them to field goals, and if we can do that, we consider it a successful series. Second and 11 and over the middle pass caught by Reggie Bush to the 15. You know you start talking about all the playmakers that the Saints have. And you think about Debrie Henderson and Meacham who stepped up and Marcus Colston and Shockey. Pierre Thomas has emerged as a go to guy as the running back. The guy you forget about is Reggie Bush who's now averaging just over 11 touches. That's it per game. Yeah, his uh, his involvement in this offense this year, of course, he has missed some games because of injury, but he, he's missed games every year. But his involvement this year in the offense has, has been as little as it's ever been. Third down and six, Breeze steps up and throws, pass broken up. No penalty flag. Intended for Shockey. 
and the play was made defensively by Chevis Jackson. Well and this is what Mike Smith was talking about. We've got to get off the field and just give up field goals. They're able to do that down here in the red zone. One of the real keys to this play was that they were able to make Drew Brees reset his feet in the pocket. They got a, enough pressure on him to where he had to move and then reset. He's still awfully good when he does that but good coverage. Hartley drills it a 33 yarder and so the Saints who were 0 for 4 in the red zone last week against the Redskins 0 for their last five can't get a touchdown but get three and tie it. Today's game on Fox is sponsored by the Ford F-150, built Ford Tough. By Visa. Visa debit is easier than cash. More people go with Visa. And by Warner Brothers Pictures' Sherlock Holmes, starring Robert Downey Jr. in theaters Christmas Day. Jeremy Shockey went over to the bench and was complaining to his head coach, Sean Payton, thinking that he was interfered with by Chevis Jackson on that third down throw. And now Morstead will kick it away waiting deep is Eric Weems and a booming kick by Morstead. We'll take a break when we come back the Falcons offense will be on the field. It's a 3 3 game in the first quarter here in Atlanta. There's Matt Ryan who's inactive for the second straight game. They call it turf toe. I don't know that that description does it justice. It's really involves a stretching of ligaments under the toe. Which can be really serious and chronic, and guys have a tough time coming back from that. It's a real problem, especially it's on his right big toe, so it's his plant foot. Here's Redmond rolling right, and he hits his tight end, Tony Gonzalez, who's out across the 25 to the 27. We go for a game break. Here's Kurt Menefee. Well, like the Saints, the Colts, of course, trying to remain unbeaten on the season, and they get off to a good start. Opening drive, 13 plays. It ends in a Peyton Manning to Austin Collie touchdown. And the Colts lead the Broncos 7 0. That one in the first quarter as well. Joe Troy and Pam. All right, Kurt. So the Colts are going for their 22nd consecutive regular season victory, and they that would be a record. They clinch home field advantage throughout the playoffs with a win. And they lead Denver. Handoff is to Norwood. He's got a first down, spins around, and he's out near the 39. Harper on the stop and a gain of 12 and a good burst there by Jarius Norwood. Well, they just go right at it. They're able to fake the reverse the other way, which holds enough of that backside that it keeps the linebackers from really being able to collapse on that. Saints had a chance up front, failed to make the tackle, but you know, we talk about it. Running the football is very important, and it's something that they did very well against this Saints defense the last time these two teams met. In that game, Michael Turner was able to rush for over 150 yards. A toss Norwood hands it off that's Weems with Redmond out in front of him blocking getting in the way of Harper and Weems is down to the 30. Thirty one yards on a reverse to Eric Weems on the previous play they faked the wide receiver around this time they come back to it only they give it to Weems on the reverse and you've got Redmond out there in front. Kind of leading the way and Michael Jenkins does a good job as well on Randall Gay but Weems is the guy who can make some things happen for this Atlanta team. He's got great quickness quickness excellent speed. And those are the types of plays that offensive coordinator Mike Malarkey likes to call up. Thirty one yard season long for Weems here's Norwood over the right side and so now each team who had their opening possession stall inside the opponent's red zone. Came away with three points and it's the Atlanta Falcons moving it right back down the field. Second down and eight and there's a look at offensive coordinator Mike Malarkey who's trying to figure out a way to pick apart this Saints defense without his starting quarterback and without his top running back. Falcons already over 100 total yards on the day and this one is for Snelling penalty flag comes flying in from the secondary and Snelling is brought down at the 20. 
Well, they had the screen play on in the Saints in man coverage. They've been playing predominantly man coverage here in this ball game, and had Jonathan Vilma locked up on Snelling, and that can be a good play when you've got a screen on if you're able to pick that guy off. Rather impressive throw by Redmond. There is no foul for offensive pass interference as a defender initiated contact against the offensive player. Play results. Play results in the first down. So you heard Tony Corrente say there is no offensive pass interference. And on that screen, which wasn't pretty the way it was set up, pretty good throw there by Redmond to float it over Vilma for the first down. <laughs> well, I'll say, and then on the other side, uh, Sam Baker, we talked about he didn't play last week, and you know he's he's got his hands full there against Will Smith. Will Smith having himself an excellent year. Already 10 sacks. He's just a half sack shy of his career high for a season. Wide open underneath is Mahaley. And the fullback on first down gains seven. Malcolm Jenkins on the stop. And so far, Atlanta's had no problem with big plays on first down. Well, I like what I've seen so far from Chris Redman in this offense for Atlanta. Just their second possession. They've been able to move the football on the ground. We saw the reverse. But last week in that loss to Philadelphia, they got behind in a hurry. And that was a difficult defense for Chris Redman to try to navigate then with that pass rush. But he's been able to hit a few things here early in this game that should help him settle in. Handoff is to Norwood. And Norwood ran into the pile. He's going to be two yards shy of a first down. Vilma was there to stuff it for the Saints. Well, Chris Redman is, uh, you know, probably not a lot of people know that he was out of football for three years. In 04, 05, and 06, was selling insurance. And then he came here to Atlanta, had an opportunity, and has been with them ever since. And that's why a couple of weeks ago, when he came off the bench, had not played a lot of football and had to come in off the bench against Tampa Bay and really did a nice job and was able to win that game for him. It's third down and two. Redmond trying to run for the first down and he will not get it. Just back to the line of scrimmage Cedric Ellis was there defensively for the Saints. And Atlanta's just happy to see Redmond pop up. Get up and jog off the field after that hit. You see Ellis and he might have gotten away with a little bit of a face mask. Yep sure enough he got in there with the left hand. Wow. And I'm surprised that that no one saw that. Of course they, he had a hold of the jersey and so the back was then to the official that, that would have been the one making that call. So a break there for the Saints. Instead of an automatic first down on a face mask. It's a 30 yard field goal for Matt Bryant. Who is two for two. Not only was it Ellis grabbing the face mask of Chris Redman, but he got some of Cedric Ellis. 6 3 Atlanta in the first. 32 seconds left in the opening quarter. Atlanta's been impressive. Offensively, when you look at the numbers, 125 yards on two possessions, 59 of those yards on the ground, but. Just six points. That's Roby from the end zone. One of the better kick returners in the NFL. Got hit hard as he crossed the 20 out to the 22. And now the two teams start to rough it up a little bit. And continue to. Yeah, that's just good NFC South football right there. Banging heads, roughing it up. Knocking each other around. And I think you have to be impressed with the way Atlanta's been able to move the ball here early. Yeah, you know, that's what New Orleans has, has given up defensively. I mean, they've allowed people to move the football, and, and Atlanta does have to feel good about what they've been able to do, and of course have had some some nice runs. But when you're playing the Saints and you get down there, I mean you really need to come away with these touchdowns. Unless this Atlanta Falcons defense can do something that no one else has really been able to do. And Keep New Orleans from scoring touchdowns. I and mean, this is a Saints offense that hasn't scored less than 24 points all year. Handoff is to Hamilton, and it's Abraham off the edge to make the stop no gain. And this is a team for New Orleans that's averaging, if you want to round up, 37 points per game. 
And they are closing in on their franchise record for points scored in a season which they set last year with 463. 6 3 is the score after one, and Atlanta Falcons on top. Back after this from your local Fox station. How about these numbers to put in perspective what the Saints are doing in 2009? You also remember what the Patriots did in 2007 and then marvel at what the 1950 L.A. Rams did averaging just under 39 points per game. Those are the top three totals in NFL history at second down and ten for the Saints down by three. <laughs> Penalty flags as they blow that play dead. And it's a false start. False start. Offense number 74. Five yard penalty. Remains second down. And thank you, Tony Carrenti. Here's Kurt Menefee with a game break. Carolina may be out of it in the NFC South, but they're not playing like it with Matt Moore at quarterback in New England. Here he hooks up with Steve Smith, 41 yards on the score. And the Panthers have a lead in the first quarter over the Patriots. 7 0. Joe Troy and Pan. All right, Kurt. Belichick might send everybody home next week. Yeah, they, they won't have one. anybody to feel, <laughs> won't be able to field a team. Second down and 15. Breeze. Shockey. Well played by this Falcons defense as Shockey is brought down the 23. And John Stinchcomb is down and cannot get up. They've already lost Jamal Brown. Their starting left tackle went on IR with a hip injury at the end of September. Bushrod is out there and Stinchcomb is having a tough time getting up. We'll take a break. Today's game on Fox is sponsored by Miller Lite. Triple hops brewed for the great Pilsner taste. Taste greatness. By Domino's 599 carryout pizza deal. And by Autotrader.com. You'll find the car you want at the price you want at Autotrader.com. Stinchcomb came out. Zach Streif checks in at right tackle. It's third down and eight. Plenty of time for Breeze, who finds Shockey, who's been busy here in the first half. 18 yards and a first down. Atlanta that time, they only bring a four man rush. They play zone in behind it. And, you know, it's so difficult. You try to mix it up as best you can. They've got to be very. Selective as to when they want to bring pressure on Drew Brees, but you can see the protection that he was afforded, and then one on one, you know, in the zones with Jeremy Shockey. Three catches, 35 yards for Shockey. Falcons did what they wanted in that first quarter, held the ball for just under 10 minutes, keeping Brees and the Saints offense off the field. Penalty flag comes sailing in as Pierre Thomas gains a yard over the left side. Jeremy Shockey guilty of a hold. And Jeremy Shockey, as far as the blocking, that's something that he was asked to do a lot of there at the end of his time with the New York Giants. He's going to be blocking the end of the line right here. And you've got to have a tight end that can do that effectively if you're going to run to the tight end side. But Jeremy Shockey does not do near as much blocking now with New Orleans. Of course, Sean Payton, who was his offensive coordinator when he came into the league, you know, utilizes him very well. He just yanked Chauncey Davis down to the ground. Definitely was guilty of a hold, and now Breeze with Thomas, who was initially blocking. Thomas makes the catch, and he's out to the 37, a gain of six. You know, one of the good things with uh, what the Falcons have been able to do is they, they've been able to shorten the game a little bit. This is just the Saints' second offensive possession. You see that they they double on John Abraham right there. And, you know, John Abraham has had a little bit of a down year. He's only got three and a half sacks on the year. Two of those came in the season opener against the Miami Dolphins. But as Sean Payton said to us the other day, you know, he's certainly capable of taking over a game, and they're going to try to keep that from happening. Now what a lot of teams have done against Abraham is they've run the football at him with some success. 
Second down and 14. Thomas underneath makes the catch and fights for a couple of extra yards in the arms of Chevis Jackson, a gain of nine. Third down coming up. Look ahead to next week. It's a doubleheader Sunday. There are the early games, including the Falcons and the Jets. Troy Pam and I will be in Pittsburgh for the Steelers and the Packers, and the Packers have a 10 to nothing lead in the early going at Chicago as we play here in Atlanta with the Falcons up by three third and four breeze down the middle Meacham hit in stride beautiful throw from Drew breeze. 43 yards and a first down inches outside the 10. They're just not getting much pressure on Drew Brees with a four man rush. And, and like the last play, they're playing zone in behind it. And Meacham's just able to go right by him. You know, as you can see, Christopher Owens just making his third NFL start. He kind of sits on the route. And Meacham's one of those guys that they like to get vertical. You know, why you would sit on that? No one that that's that's the guy you're having to deal with. That for Meacham his 11th catch of 20 or more yards this season. What a year it's been for Robert Meacham as Thomas takes it to the nine. Brought down by Deku. You've got Meacham who in his rookie year didn't make a catch. He had knee problems. Didn't get into a ball game last year. He played in 14 games, had 12 catches, 289 yards, three touchdowns. And here he is now with the reputation of being a home run hitter on the outside for Drew Brees. Well, this has been his breakout season, and he has made the most of it. Each week, they've seen improvement from him. And I know in talking with Drew Brees just prior to this game, I mean, he really likes what he's doing right now. Second down and eight, and here's Reggie Bush on a screen brought down from behind by Mike Peterson. And a penalty flag on the far side of the field at the nine. There is no penalty for offensive pass interference. Number 85 initiated a block at the line of scrimmage, which was legal. The play results third down. So that's the second time in this first half that the officials have picked up a flag for offensive pass interference. This time, David Thomas was taken off the hook, and it's third down. Well, I know in visiting with Mike Smith, he compared Drew Brees to Peyton Manning. Knowing that, hey, this is an offense that's going to get their yards. They're going to move the football. We've got to be awfully good once they get into the red zone in just giving up three points. If they do that, they feel like they'll have a real shot at winning this game. It's third down and five in the pass for Reggie Bush in for the touchdown. Second receiving touchdown of the season for Reggie Bush. His seventh overall. Yeah, Reggie Bush starts in the backfield. It's just an option route. They double the flag route, so it leaves Bush one on one. And he's out, he's able to outflank then Mike Peterson. And there's just it's just not a contest. I mean, that's no negative against Mike Peterson, but when he's in man-to-man -man coverage against a guy that has a two-way break. Reggie Bush is going to win that all day. This game is all about matchups, and Sean Payton found a way to match up Reggie Bush on linebacker Mike Peterson, and it's Reggie Bush who won that battle and who has the first touchdown of this game. Saints now on top, 10-6. I'd say a pretty good start for old Drew Brees. 11 of 12 overall, 151 yards, a touchdown. Seven for seven on that drive. Three third down conversions for the Saints, including the touchdown on third and five to Reggie Bush. And no return by Weems. Falcons will start at their 20, down by four.
Working on the right big toe and the foot of Shockey on the sideline as the Falcons start at their 20 and hand it off to Snelling over the right side. Snelling's had a nice start to this game and he fights his way forward for six. You talked about the three years out of the game for Chris Redman. When Bobby Petrino, Troy, came to the Atlanta Falcons from Louisville, they needed an arm in camp. Redman had been out of the game for the three years and he said, well, I know Redman can throw. He was at Louisville, so they brought him in just as a guy to wing it around during camp, and he's developed enough and has established himself enough to be a backup. And now, with the injury to Matt Ryan, here he is starting. Yeah, and Mike Smith was aware of him because he was with the Baltimore Ravens while Mike Smith was on that coaching staff. Here's a toss to Snelling, and he spins his way forward for a first down to the 31. And I mean, if you look at this game here in this first half and what's happened, the, the Falcons now with their third offensive possession, they've moved the ball on both of their first two, and they they just stalled once they got down in the red zone and have had to settle for field goals. Same thing with the Saints, only they get the touchdown on the last possession. So, you know, all in all, I think that the, the Falcons have got to feel pretty good, at least what they've been able to do here on the offensive side. And Chris Redman, he, you know, he settled in as well. Drew Brees having a having a great game here in the early going, but Chris Redman playing well also. Good protection here. He has all day and goes down the middle of the field. Jenkins wide open and he can't make the catch. Talk about a breakdown in coverage. Michael Jenkins had nobody around him. Yeah, Michael Jenkins, and, and he was so open, and Redmond had a chance to see that he was that open. It looked like a little bit of a double move because they've got safety help there. It was. It was a dig and go. And you just lay that one up. Now, that was a ball that Jenkins, you know, might have been able to catch, but a hard catch to make. I mean, one off the, the fingertips there. Redmond, seeing that he was open as much as he was, could have given him a much easier ball to catch. So there's one that got away and a missed chance for Atlanta. When you play the Saints, you can't whiff on those. And here is Norwood, who gains two. It was a week ago that the Redskins picked apart the secondary for the New Orleans Saints. 367 passing yards against Greg Williams' group. Well, we go back and look at this, and, and Jenkins is coming off a high ankle sprain. And so, probably under normal circumstances, he runs that one down pretty good. I don't think he's at 100%. And maybe that's part of why, you know, Redmond overthrows him. But, but still, you know, when the guy is that open, you know, sometimes those are the hardest ones to complete. It's third down and eight. More protection. This one is thrown away in the direction of Roddy White. Nothing there. And now this crowd a little frustrated with that missed chance on that deep ball to Jenkins. It'll be the first punt of the day from Michael Kanan. Well, you know this about a team coached by Mike Smith. Last year was the AP NFL Coach of the Year. They're not going to come in undermanned and just lay down. And they have shown here in the first half that they're ready to play. New Orleans have moved the ball, but they trail by four. Kanan hits a booming punt. Reggie Bush from outside the 10 starts to his right, cuts it back to the left, and goes down the sideline. Good return out to the 35. Averaging just three and a half yards per punt return. That was good for 24, his longest of the season. Saints have it up four. John Stinch comes back in the game at right tackle. They're the offensive leaders for the Saints. Reggie Bush has the touchdown, and here's a pass caught by Colston. And he's got eight. Brett Grimes on the tackle. It's Grimes getting the start at right corner in place of the injured Chris Houston out with a bad hamstring. Well the Falcons have been reluctant so far in this game to bring pressure but they do this time. This is the problem though when you're facing Drew Brees he recognizes that they're bringing the pressure and the ball gets out. Very difficult to confuse him. He does such a great job of studying during the week and knowing exactly what a defense's tendencies are and he sees the field so well. And that's one of the reasons why he doesn't get sacked very often. Second down and two and Pierre Thomas gets about half a yard. Let's go for a game break. Here's Kurt. 
Well, Minnesota, the nearest team to the Saints in the NFC standings. Two games separate the two, and hey, you got to catch them. you got to be lucky, right? Greg Lewis takes the bouncing ball, 18 yards, leads to a Viking field goal. It's 3-0 there on top of Cincinnati, that one in the second quarter. Go to him there. All right, so the Vikings are 10-2. and two. Adrian Peterson was held to 19 yards rushing last week at Arizona on Sunday night. Here is an end around and that's Meacham with room to move that room closes up a bit before the tackles made by Nicholas a gain of four but a first down for the Saints. The Falcons were able to get pressure inside expecting a handoff up the middle and that's one of the things that Sean Payton does you know I talk about Chris Redmond going with the wristband in this game Sean Payton his call sheet he's got a lot more than 130 plays on that board. I mean he's got a, he comes into a game with an awful lot of plays to call from and he uses a lot of them and, and a big part of what Sean does is you know some of those types of plays with reverses the halfback passes we see it all. They fake and end around to Reggie Bush and now throw to him and Nicholas makes the play. A gain of four piano. Piano. Weekdays make lunchtime your new prime time as FoxSports.com brings you lunch with benefits. Log on to check out new episodes of original sports shows delivered to your desktop every Monday through Friday at 1 Eastern. Tomorrow, don't miss the after party with Jake Glazer. Jay chats with all of today's biggest performers only at FoxSports.com on MSN. Balls at the 49 yard line for the Saints. They lead it by four, second and six. Trying to direct the protection play clock is winding down. And Sean Payton talks with Devery Henderson Meacham the wide receivers as Breeze comes over. First time out taken by the Saints in the half. Two head coaches Mike Smith and Sean Payton made their coaching debuts as assistants with San Diego State Aztec Heritage runs deep Don Coriel. Head coach 61 to 72 Joe Gibbs the offensive line coach. There's a wanted poster of John Madden the <laughs> defensive assistant Mike Smith linebackers coach in the early 80s and Sean Payton dreamy looking 88 89 92 93 former quarterback at Eastern Illinois University in Charleston Illinois second and seven. Here's Meacham spinning to make the catch gets to the sideline and a penalty flag comes in. They queue on the tackle after a gain of four. And Sean Payton's already complaining about the call. <laughs> He's been complaining about a few calls already in this game and that was another example of some Holding of the offense number 19. Ten yard penalty. Repeat second down. That was on Devery Henderson on the outside another example of some of the things that Sean Payton likes to get to he tries to keep this offense from getting too stale and you know one of the challenges that he has as the play caller is coming up with a lot of different things that involve all of the different players that he has. You know, this is a wide receiver group that's very unselfish but that doesn't mean that they don't want to be involved in the game plan from week to week and he tries to find different things and on that last play. We saw the fake there to Meacham put him in motion and it was a screen play the entire way the ball was going to go to him regardless when Devery Henderson got caught on the hole. It's second down and 17. Well it's coming from the Falcons that flushes breeze to his right and he throws completes it to Shockey. Catch is made in front of Nicholas a gain of 12. And you see a bunch of Falcons defensive players back here on the ground. I mean they're in pursuit. They do a good job. Breeze escapes it. They're in man coverage and just a perfectly thrown ball by Drew Breeze on the move under pressure. I mean that's pretty good coverage right there by Nicholas but Breeze puts the ball low and away where only Shockey can make a play and you know that's where you want it as a receiver with that type of coverage. Saints are four of five on third down in this game. It's third and five. Looking left all the way and the pass broken up but a flag. 
Brent Grimes interfered with Meacham. Yeah I'd like to take another look at that one because from from here I, I didn't really see it. I That's thought it was pretty good coverage. Defense number 20. Well, Automatic. First down. You see that left hand that left arm got him as he went in on the slant right there. That was a good call there by the officials. We're seeing the Falcons bringing more pressure now. They recognize we're not getting there with a four man rush. We can't hold up with a zone coverage behind it. So now they're bringing more people and they're playing man behind it. And Mike Smith doesn't like that call at all. But it was a, it was a good call. And Mike Smith's on the far sideline. So he didn't get a good look at that left arm either. Screaming to the officials to let him play. Here is Breeze rolling right and completing to Henderson. Devery Henderson inside the 30. And Breeze just doesn't miss. He has one incompletion. He pitched a perfect game against New England a couple of weeks ago with a quarterback rating of 158. And he leads the NFL in quarterback rating this season. Well, and you know, like Mike Smith knew, he said, hey, last week against the, the Redskins, he completed 35 passes against what was at that time the number one pass defense in the league. There's Pierre Thomas, who has wrestled down inside the 25. Breeze has thrown 12 straight completions. And I said this the last time you and I were doing a game that the Saints were playing in, and they were playing earlier this season in Philadelphia. I don't know if you listed all the free agents that have signed over the years. This guy has to be one of the top five to join a franchise. He's the face of this franchise. He's done a lot in the community, and he has broken records just about every time he steps on the field. Second and four. Pass is quick and complete to Meacham. And that signing, Joe, it was not without risk. I mean, remember the shoulder injury that he had, and yet he has not missed a game since he signed here with the Saints four years ago. Saints with a first down at the two minute warning as they lead Atlanta by four. Today's game on Fox is sponsored by AT&T, a better 3G experience. This telecast is copyrighted by the NFL for the private use of our audience. Any other use of this telecast or any pictures, descriptions, or accounts of the game without the NFL's consent is prohibited. It is a first down for the Saints. They're in the red zone of the Atlanta Falcons. And on first down, Breeze look left, comes back across the middle, and he hits Pierre Thomas. Thomas has another Saints first down. He sets up first and goal, gaining 12 yards before Nicholas made the tackle. You know, Breeze dropped back. He wanted to go to Shockey. They had split him out wide to the left. And Shockey's, a, you know, we showed, uh, you know, him with his foot and stuff. He's not moving real well, but they covered him up well. And Breeze does a nice job coming underneath. Here's Pierre Thomas, who takes it down to the three. Deku on the stop. We mentioned that. This is the number five red zone offense in the NFL, the Saints. But they're in the red zone more than anybody else. They were 0 for their last five, 0 for their last six before they scored the last time down here on that third and five pass to Reggie Bush. It's now second and goal. Play action from Breeze who throws and incomplete. Pass intended for Marcus Colston and it was Chevis Jackson back there defending for the Falcons. Yeah, and I think that's one that Drew Breeze would like to have back because Marcus Colston has a definite size advantage and you got to get that ball up. And typically Drew Breeze will. But he wasn't able to get it up high to where Colston could go up and then make a play. They've got a they've got a decisive advantage. These wide receivers do over the smaller corners of the Atlanta Falcons. Breeze had completed 14 straight. It's third and goal. Over the middle, that's Colston for the touchdown. That was a good design there by the Saints and they're going to get banged there by the linebackers but then he comes underneath Mike Peterson does he starts like he's going to carry Colston to the back line but he comes off of it 
because Thomas is coming underneath and they're able to get the ball in then before the safety gets to make the play. About 31 touchdown passes for Drew Brees as Garrett Hartley bangs an extra point off the right upright. And it's a 10 point game. Could factor in as we go along here this afternoon, but here's the touchdown from Brees to Colston. And for Marcus Colston, his third straight game with a touchdown catch. You and I, Troy, and, and it was your point, and it's a good point. We were down there on the field before the game. I don't know that we've ever paid as much attention to a place kicker as we did with Garrett Hartley, who was in his second game of the season, taking over for John Carney. Hartley was suspended for the first four games of the year. I'll tell you, Hartley was having a tough time making field goals just during the pregame warm-up. <laughs> yeah, I was watching him and I saw him miss a couple short ones and then just kind of kept my eye on him and knowing that that this is just his second game. And I mean this guy's in a funk right now and he came into the game that way because he was missing a lot of kicks. And we got Shockey going in. We talked about it and we showed it. You know, that foot, that toe is giving him some problems and you know, watching him, he, he just wasn't able to cut on it and plan on it the way that he needs to to be as effective as he needs to be. You know, that throw, though, by Drew Brees to Colston for the touchdown, you know, some would look at that throw and say, wow, not a great throw. It was behind him. But it was a great throw because that's where he knows leverage of defenders as well as any quarterback, maybe better than any quarterback in the game today, and puts the ball where only his guy can make a play on it. Weems will take a knee. And we look ahead. The playoff picture is we project you've got the New Orleans Saints at 12 and 0 leading here today by 10. The wild card teams Green Bay and Philadelphia right now at 8 and 4 and then certainly still alive the Atlanta Falcons and the New York Giants. The Giants play at home tonight against the Philadelphia Eagles in one of the bigger games of the day. Well, if the Giants, if they're able to beat Philadelphia and if the Chargers beat the Cowboys, I mean, you've got a three way tie there in the NFC East. That's really the only division that's still up for grabs in the NFC. Here's a wide open White penalty flag on the play, and Roddy White spins down with a 27 yard catch and run. And Tony Carrenti is now alerted to the fact that there's a penalty flag out on the field, so we'll get the call. Yeah, there it is. Malcolm Jenkins comes up and and makes contact with Roddy White after the five yards. Malcolm Jenkins, a young player. Illegal contact, defense number 27. This penalty is declined. The result of the play, first down. A young player that last week. You know he had some growing up to do against that Washington Redskins team and they went after him a few times and were able to make a few plays and that's all part of it. I mean he's playing earlier now because of some of the injuries and they like him though he's he's going to get better. This is be a good experience for him through this season. Out of the shotgun pass is complete. That's Gonzalez Atlanta has all three of their timeouts remaining they'll use one here. As Gonzalez was good for six yards on first down. The Visa halftime reports coming up. Kurt Terry, Howie, Michael, and Jimmy will have scores and highlights from around the league. And the Fox Sports ticker will keep you updated with up to the second stats. Well, some points here before the half could go a long way for the Atlanta Falcons and how they feel about themselves going in to the locker room at halftime. They trail by 10. They stalled a couple of times inside the red zone and now they've got a second down and four with two timeouts left and the ball at the 47. Yeah and I would think that the mindset right now for Redmond and Mike Malarkey is we're going to get in the end zone. I, I would expect them to try to take a shot and not be happy with just trying to settle for a field goal here. Just a three man rush and over the middle passes incomplete no flag. Marty Booker. Thought he was interfered with and no penalty flag is thrown it's third and four Boy, a missed opportunity here Booker he gets inside and, and against this two deep coverage there was just nobody there and you know I think they've got a, a legitimate argument there. It was Randall Gay in coverage been playing with a bad hamstring inactive last week. And 
the fact that Randall Gay's playing inside, you know, Greg Williams, the defensive coordinator, said if we put him inside, it's because I feel that he's struggling. Here's a blitz. The pass is caught by Jenkins and a big first down for Atlanta as they will use another timeout with 28 seconds left. It was Jenkins in front of Jenkins, the rookie. And a first down for the Falcons. Well, Jenkins is one of those guys that has good size too. I mean, this guy's six four, and so you know you're able to use your body. There's a lot of areas, a lot of places for a quarterback to throw the football when you've got a guy with that kind of size, and that's what Jenkins can do. One, he, he can be a physical receiver at the point of the catch, and he can make the tough catches. You know, to go back to what I was saying about Randall Gay. Randall Gay is their starting corner, and then when they get into these sub packages, three defensive backs, three corners. They bring in Mike McKenzie who was just brought in a few weeks ago and they weren't certain what they were going to then do with the inside slot receiver and Greg Williams said if Gay's in there it's because I feel he needs some help. Here is a pass caught by Booker he spins out of bounds with a gain of six. Right now still with with one timeout left. You know there's still some time to where they're able to take a shot down the middle of the field and use the timeout and still take a shot into the end zone. And I would think that they would try to do that. We see Booker he's a little banged up now. He comes out Weems comes in second down and four. Pass is underneath caught by Weems he hops out in front of Jenkins. A yard shy of a first down and now penalty flag comes in. It was after the play. It was thrown at the feet there of Charles Grant. I don't know if he was the one who was involved in it. At the conclusion of the play, personal foul, unnecessary roughness, defense number 94. This penalty will be assessed half a distance to the goal. Automatic first down. So Charles Grant, who I'm sure is frustrated, he has only a half sack over the last eight games. The personal foul doesn't excuse it but it's a big penalty as it takes it down to the 14 yard line 19 seconds left. Yeah and you can see Sean Payton he's not happy about it at all and nor should he be when Charles Grant he got him out he got him off the field immediately and he gave him an earful because now you know they can take a couple shots here with still one timeout remaining. Blitz coming from the Saints pass is broken up that's gay. In front of Finneran. So Randall Gay made the play, and now 15 seconds remain. Well, man coverage, and so Finneran's just got to be able to beat him to the inside. If he's able to do that, you can see you fit that ball in, it's a touchdown, but Randall Gay does a nice job there of laying out. Initially, I thought there might have been some contact prior to that ball arriving, but just good coverage on his part. Second down and 10. Redmond throws this time Finneran makes the catch but that just takes it to the nine and with eight seconds left the Falcons will call their final timeout. This January Fox once again brings you the greatest week in college football beginning on New Year's Day for the Allstate Sugar Bowl the AT&T Cotton Bowl the Tostitos Fiesta Bowl. And finally, the FedEx Orange Bowl, the Bowl Bash, begins New Year's Day on Fox in high definition. And congratulations to Mark Ingram, who won the Heisman last night. Yeah, that was uh, that was something. I mean, uh, what, I tell you, what was interesting to me, Joe, is uh, was. Colt McCoy finishing third. I, I thought it was a two man race, but it was far from it. It's third down and four. This one to the end zone for Jenkins. And now, with just four seconds remaining, and on fourth down, a field goal attempt coming from Bryant, who's two for two. Well, I think that the Falcons, you know, with, with such little time on the clock when they got the ball, to be able to come down here and and come away with potentially three points. They, they've got to feel good about that. But like we've talked about, I mean, if they make this, it's a one possession game. But at some point, they, they've got to start, start scoring some touchdowns when they get down to this area of the field. 
twenty seven yard attempt by Bryant. And it's a seven point game. So because of the mixed extra point by Hartley it's a seven point game and we are at the half. Sixteen nine. The NFL on Fox will continue after this from your local Fox station. from the first half here in Atlanta in our avatar game summary look at the total yards what's happened on third down time of possession and then specifically what's gone on inside the red zone avatar in theaters everywhere on Friday. Saints will start this second half with the football. Cannon kicks it away and it's yet another touchback. 25th of the season for Kanan. Let's go down to the field and Pam Oliver. Well, Joe, speaking to both coaches at halftime, first of all, Sean Payton, as we walked off the field, we talked about how he stays patient as a uh, signal caller. As a play caller, he said, you know, I always go and seek for balance. Beyond that, he said penalties are killing us. He also mentioned they're going to try to get some help for Bushrod. He feels like John Abraham is being a little bit too successful. Mike Smith said third down. we got to get off the field. Also, scoring, keeping matching them uh, step for step. Back to you. All right, Pam, thank you. Thank you. Drew Brees is now just over 30,000 career passing yards. As he hands to Pierre Thomas, picking his way through the right side. And gain four. Good play made out there by Christopher Owens. Yeah, great play made by him. And they've done a good job against this running game for the Saints throughout that first half. They just haven't been able to slow down <laughs> Drew Brees, but who has? When you look at his numbers and what he was able to do and you know of course you, you know you listen to Pam Oliver and her conversation with Sean Payton and you know at some point you just got to start kind of making some things up because Drew Brees isn't 19 of 21 you know because he wasn't getting protection. Pass is complete that's Colston and Colston is just short of first down yardage they'll mark him at about the 29 and a half third down yeah, and my point being that. You know this offensive line did a pretty good job there in that first half. Jermont Bushrod as well. You know now has Abraham gotten back there a couple times and put a little pressure on him. Sure he has, but they've been pretty good. Handoff is to Reggie Bush. Broke a tackle. Gets a first down. Still going. They coup on the stop. A run of 19 yards and a missed tackle in the backfield, which allows the Saints. To pick up a first down. Yeah, it's Jonathan Babineau, 95, who's able to get the penetration. If he makes a play there on Reggie Bush, then it forces the Saints to punt. And that's just that's what's happened here to the Falcons here in this game is they've just not been able to make a play when they've been in position on third down to end these drives. And we saw earlier when Owens wasn't able to make a play on a slam, and that's kind of been the story here in this ball game. That's now six. Consecutive third down conversions by the Saints on offense. Play clock winding down. Timeout, New Orleans. First down when we come back as they lead by seven. Today's game on Fox is sponsored by Southwest Airlines. Go to southwest.com, grab your bag, it's on. By Windows 7, your PC simplified. And by Cadillac. From our family to yours, season's best from Cadillac. Saints look at Pierre Thomas over on the sideline first down New Orleans they lead by just seven Saints are averaging eight yards per play which is terrific handoff is to Hamilton and Hamilton maintains that average as he gets eight plus will give him nine tackle made by Grimes yeah, watch John Abraham this is one of the reasons why teams like to run at him. You know, he's going to go off in coverage is what he's thinking but as he's dropping then they're running the ball right at him and he's not able to then make up for that and get back into the play to reroute the back. 
Second down and one handoff again and Hamilton has a first down as he picks up two. You know really Joe looking at this ball game. You know, as good as the Saints have moved the ball and scoring touchdowns and even though the Falcons you know did they got the field goals but you know the one big play that that Chris Redmond missed there to Michael Jenkins is is the difference in this game. I mean that, a touchdown difference and they had a touchdown you know on that play had they have been able to connect. Down Saints at the 40. Hamilton doesn't get much. Give him a yard over the right side. Babino made the play. He whiffed on that Reggie Bush tackle on third down moments ago. Babino was arrested and charged with marijuana possession on Thursday night. Team is allowing him to play here this afternoon, and he has been one of the better defensive linemen for Mike Smith in this Atlanta team he is tied for the club lead with five sacks yeah, he's been the one guy when you when you really watch these these Falcon games defensively as to who jumps out at you Babino along that defensive front is one of those guys that has second down and nine and the handoff is to Reggie Bush towel goes flying and Bush is just inches short of the 30. They're going to give him progress, little extra. Now they move it back, and it'll be just short of first down yardage. Peterson made that tackle for the Falcons. A pretty good movement right there by that offensive line up front, and this is a group that, you know, we talk about it from time to time. Not not a group that gets a lot of acclaim, primarily because they're overshadowed by these receivers as well as Drew Brees and how prolific they are throwing the football. But these guys are. These guys have always been good in protecting Drew Brees and this year they've been really good running the football as run blockers. Here's Hamilton in the backfield cuts up field has a first down flag comes in. Lionel Hamilton been busy on this possession got five. We'll check the marker. Holding offense number 64 10 yard penalty repeat. Down. That's an extra tackle Zach Streif who was along the offensive line guilty of a hole and it brings Zach Streif in on short yardage and goal line situations as an extra blocker. He's on the end of the line a little late coming out of his stance and that's why he then causes the hold. It was an easy call and the right call but because he was slow coming out of his stance then he's trying to make up for that and he didn't have to do that because he had nothing to do with the outcome of the play. Jamal Anderson tackled on that play by Streif and now it's third down and 11 and the Saints are out of field goal range. That was a big penalty. Blitz coming from the Falcons. Breeze lets it go for Meacham. A lot of hand checking passes picked off but there are flags. And I'm not so sure that that that's not on Meacham. It's Grimes and it is against Grimes. Well there's contact all the way down and Grimes is is trying to run him then to the sideline. The initial indication was against Grimes. Close interference defense number 20 automatic first down. Now that is one thing that you cannot do as a, as a defensive back you can't turn and then run the guy into the sideline you know the way that he did. I mean there's a lot of things that are prohibitive for these defensive backs but you know all in all he turns and he makes a play on the ball and I I guess to the letter of the rule then you could say yeah that's pass interference but it sure didn't look like much to me and you can see that Mike Smith didn't like the call either. <laughs> to say the least. Well, and, and I mean, it's hard enough when you're dealing with what he's having to deal with and these defensive backs are, but when you start making those kinds of calls, it's almost then impossible for these defensive backs to be able to hold up. I mean, his blood is boiling down on the sideline. I don't blame him. Grimes got his head around. As you said, he was guiding him toward the sideline. That's about all he did. That's a 28 yard penalty. The Saints followed up with a throw, but an incompletion to Henderson. Looked like he had it for a moment, lost it. 
And unlike the previous throw for the touchdown to Marcus Colston, this one was not a good throw by Drew Brees. He threw this one behind, but he didn't have to. He could have led Henderson in front. Still a ball that Henderson should catch. But Drew Brees usually makes these throws a lot easier on these receivers. And as he's trying to bring it in, then you got Deku who's just there to break it up. And Mike Smith needs a new headset. Second down and ten. Ball comes out. Reggie Bush got back on top of it. Knocked out by Abraham. Falcons say they have it, but the official and Tony Corrente saying it stays with the Saints and take another look. It looked like Bush got back on top of it. There's the force fumble by Abraham and Reggie Bush. Well, that ball's out, and now he's back on top, and clearly he had it. Well, that ball just came right out of his hand without any contact. I mean, we've seen Reggie. Bush put the ball on the ground before but that time without anybody around him I don't know if the ball just didn't get seated properly or not but but yeah good the good call a good call by the officials in saying that Bush was able to make the recovery third down and 19 this is a screen for Reggie Bush lets the blockers get in front of him untouched into the end zone in his second of the day Falcons they go man coverage and the receivers on the outside ran off their defenders and then did a good job of blocking and then there had to be someone in man coverage on Reggie Bush but they brought the blitz and nobody then peeled off it looked like Mike Peterson might have been the one who was locked in man coverage he came on the blitz nobody then in coverage on Bush and an easy touchdown doesn't seem to matter down in distance for the Saints. That was a 21 yard touchdown throw on third and 19. Second of the day for Reggie Bush. 23 9, New Orleans. New Orleans Saints are 12 0, leading here by 14 points. 10 play drive covering 80 yards. Reggie Bush with a two touchdown day and with 9 11 left in the third quarter the Falcons about to get it back. Another booming kickoff by Merston and Weems takes a knee. So the Falcons down by 14 will start at their 20 when we come back here in the third quarter. You know, I said it was Mike Peterson who was in coverage. It was actually Eric Coleman who should have been in coverage then with Reggie Bush, and he continued on the blitz, which is why Reggie Bush was as open as he was. And they were in man coverage on the outside. And as you see, you've got Colston and Meacham running their defenders off, and so they've got their backs then to Reggie Bush at the time that he catches it. He just happened to call it up, and then one mistake and an easy touchdown. Here's a handoff to Norwood and Norwood's out to the 25. Drew Brees now with 120 touchdown passes in his time with the Saints. That's tied for the most in team history with Aaron Brooks. Just recently passed Mr. Manning, the patriarch of the Manning family, Archie. So the next one will be an all time record and it's second and five for Atlanta. Pass is complete first down Tony Gonzalez. Yeah, you talked about the signing of Drew Brees when he came here and, and you know and I said how it wasn't without risk. He actually wanted to go to Miami and he went and talked with the Dolphins and they were all prepared to sign him and then the doctor with the Dolphins failed him on his physical because of his shoulder. And that's ultimately how he ended up here with the New Orleans Saints and you know, things would have been a lot different around the NFL. If Drew Brees was not playing for the Saints. Randall Gay coming on a blitz Falcons pick it up and the pass caught by Jenkins a nice throw to the 45 yard line. And 23 yards on first down. 
Falcons offensive line does a good job here picking up the blitz. Randall Gay comes off the edge. Claybo, the right tackle, recognizes it, secures it. And Chris Redman, really, I mean, being overshadowed with the play of Drew Brees, but I think he's done a nice job here in this ball game. Down handoff is to Norwood. Nice cutback. Penalty flag on the play as Norwood is down to the 25. Holding offense number 76. 10 yard penalty. Repeat first down. It's Quinn Ojanaka who's getting the start in place of the injured Harvey Dahl out with a bad ankle. So you know Mike Smith, I mean he's gonna have cardiac arrest before oh. this game's over. I mean, every time they've been able to make a play, there's been a penalty, and Ojanaka is the right guard, as we talked about it. He's filling in for the second week in a row for Harvey Dahl. You know, and he's got a hand on him, and, and you know, what happens a lot of times is, as an offensive lineman, when you get in bad position and you get lazy with your feet, and the first thing you start doing is clutching and grabbing, and that's what we saw from Ojanaka on that play. Pass is complete. That's Gonzalez, and he's tripped up at midfield by Scott Shanley. A gain of five. Time of possession in the first quarter was dominated by Atlanta. Since then, it's been pretty much all New Orleans as they lead by 14 points. Penalty against Ojanaka. Instead of having a first down at the New Orleans 20 move the ball back into Atlanta territory where they now have second and 15 the ball in midfield. Another blitz from Randall Gay. He doesn't get home and here's Jenkins down the middle touchdown Atlanta no flags. Greg Williams the defensive coordinator for the Saints has not shied away from bringing pressure they bring the double corner blitz they call that their Chucky blitz and the Falcons do a good job of recognizing it and Chris Redman knows immediately he's got one on one Michael Jenkins against Darren Sharper that's a pretty good matchup that is the first touchdown of the day for Atlanta first touchdown of the season for Jenkins. Yard touchdown catch and run. Michael Jenkins on the receiving end. Redmond delivered it. Saints Falcons. It's a seven point game again. Today's game on Fox is sponsored by Sprint, official wireless service sponsor of the NFL. Falcons back in it. They have five plays of over 20 yards in this game. And it's a seven point New Orleans lead. Courtney Roby takes a knee. Back to the touchdown. Yeah, they bring the double corner blitz right here. I said it, they call it the Chucky blitz. And what it does then is it makes Darren Sharper have to come over here in coverage on Michael Jenkins. That's why he's locked up man to man. Now, if you don't get there when you're bringing that blitz, clearly it's in favor of the Atlanta Falcons. And you know the reason that Greg Williams calls that the Chucky blitz is he put that in one year against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers specifically for John Gruden. John Gruden's nickname being Chucky that's what they refer to that blitz as. And I don't know that we're going to see the Chucky blitz anymore today. Saints have it at their 20 up by seven breeze throws he hits his tight end that's Dave Thomas. David's out to the 25 yard line again of five. Peterson on the stop and Chris Redman. He's had a nice day. Well, he sure has. And, you know, after a difficult game last week, and, you know, it's good to see. And, and I was happy for him, as I said earlier, coming off the bench there against Tampa Bay. This is a young guy, too. I mean, he's out of football, as we said, for three years, but he's just in his seventh season. And I'm sure that. You know, if given the right opportunity, he, he wouldn't mind getting a chance to, to, to play a little more in this league. 15 of 21 for 280 yards. Here is a pass complete. That's Meacham for a first down. A gain of 10. You know, the one thing about these backups is it's a, it's a good job until you have to play. 
and then if you play you better play well and if you do play well then you can stick around with a club for a long time but if you don't then an organization is really forced then to make a change you know if you've got a backup that's proven that he hasn't played well you know, there's no way you can then go back into the following season with the same guy and Chris Redmond is showing that you know he could be a good backup for Matt Ryan for a few more years to come on first down it's Reggie Bush has had a nice day. I was going to say just when you think you don't have to worry about Reggie Bush anymore. He's had four big plays a 19 yard run a 21 yard touchdown catch a six yard touchdown catch a 23 yard punt return and now on first down a gain of seven and he came in with only one receiving touchdown this season he's got two today. Well he's got unique skills as we all know and, and for the most part I think the Saints have done a good job of utilizing him the best way that they can. And he's made some big plays here in this game. Second down and three and the handoff is to Thomas and Pierre is brought down short of the first down. You know, we saw it last week in the game with the Saints and the Washington Redskins. That game goes down to the wire. The Saints find a way to win. We've seen it with the Colts. I mean, it is hard to do what the Saints have done and what the Colts have done. And each week it gets harder and harder, regardless of who you're playing. And the thing that the Falcons have done a good job of here today is continuing to keep the pressure on this Saints team and not let them run away with it. Saints have converted seven consecutive third downs. Third down and one, and Breeze can't find anywhere to go, and now throws incomplete for Shockey. And the Falcons' defense holds on third and one. Well, that's a good job there by Atlanta defensively because Drew Breeze had time. And when he's had time today, he's found people to get open, but this time there wasn't anyone. They do a nice job all across the board of locking up. I mean, just a four man rush, but Breeze just had nowhere to really go with the ball. Lofton's able to come off of that one and provide help late, but a much needed stop there by that Falcons defense. First punt of the day for Morstead. Hangs it high, and Weems calls for a fair catch and hauls it in at the 20. Take a break. Atlanta Falcons offense back on the field coming off that 50 yard touchdown throw as they trail by seven. Let's step back and look around the league shall we Peyton Manning and his numbers three touchdowns a pick Andre Johnson. The Texans are taking apart Seattle and Ray Rice. With a big afternoon. How about a toss to Norwood. And Jarius picks up five. Falcons have scored on four of their five possessions, and they are tired of hearing about the fact that they've never had back to back winning seasons. This Falcons team got off to a four and one start. They've lost five of seven, and they trail by seven with under three minutes to play in the third quarter here to the Saints. And we're still seeing Chris Redman, you know, going off of that wristband and and by all indications it has cleaned up the communication in the huddle which is what they were trying to accomplish play action Redmond flings it for Roddy White and White is knocked out of bounds with a gain of 14 yards by Randall Gay Falcons have had a couple of big plays but for the most part it's been some dinking and dunking that have really I think put together a nice offensive day for Atlanta. Yeah that's that's kind of been them all season and they got the big play to to Jenkins as we saw. But in the running game a year ago they were one of the best at creating big plays this year they just haven't had those. Here's Norwood. Norwood to the 45 picked up five last year it was Michael Turner who's still out with a high ankle sprain with over 1600 yards rushing and 17 rushing touchdowns went to the Pro Bowl after his first year with the Atlanta Falcons. Yeah, last year they were second in the NFL with 69 runs of 10 yards or more and this year late in the season they only have 32 and that's that puts them at 19 in the NFL. So a dramatic decline there in their production running the ball. 
Second down and five and that one was for Snelling off his hands. Vilma was in the middle of it number 51 the middle linebacker for New Orleans. It's third and five. Good job there by Velma Snelling trying to make a play on it but you know we talk about this Saints defense and the job that Greg Williams has done and you know in a lot of ways you look at him you say yeah teams are moving the ball they're getting yards but you know, overall this is this has been a good defensive unit. Four man rush the pass for Finner and down the sideline caught it. A spinning catch for 19 yards. Well, the Falcons come back and they're able to use Finner in the same way that the Saints have been able to use some of their taller receivers. Brian Finner in is 6'5. And Chris Redmond does a good job of getting the ball up so that Finner can use his height. Randall Gay was in a trail position and he's not looking at the ball. And Redmond just gives him a chance, throws it right over the top of the head of Gay, and what a big first down. At the 36 yard line of the Saints trailing by seven a toss to Snelling takes it to the 35 first guy there was Vilma and we're under a minute to play in the third quarter as the Falcons are on the march again. Well I think the Falcons have got to feel pretty good with overall the way that they've run the ball. I mean Weems certainly picked up a lot of that yardage on the reverse and there in the first half but they've been able to at least mix in the run and have enough success to where they don't have to completely abandon it. Quick look at last year's offensive rookie of the year Matt Ryan the Falcons have actually outgained the Saints in total yards in this game but trailed by seven. Could be the last play of the quarter underneath passes caught. That's Marty Booker and Booker is short of a first down. It'll be third down and a yard when we come back in the fourth quarter. The NFL on Fox will continue after a word from your local Fox station. Well the Saints have absolutely dominated the fourth quarter this season a big reason why they are 12 and 0 third down and one for Atlanta. And I would think that against the Saints this could be two down territory make it four down territory in essence you've got two downs here to get a yard and continue this trying to get it into the end zone no doubt and knowing that and Mike Malarkey knowing that I'm sure that was discussed you know as they change to the fourth quarter and if that's the case then then clearly I would think you just come you come out and you run the ball feeling that your offensive line can get enough here to pick up the first down if given two tries if they need a fourth try. To Snelling doesn't matter. First down as he plows ahead to the 22. And so now Chris Redmond, who in this half is seven for eight for 126 yards and a touchdown, has a first down at the Saints 22. Trying to get the Falcons their seventh win of the season as they trail by seven. Looks like he was thinking about throwing it. Now he cuts up field and picks up the yard. Charles Grant was out there to make the stop. Yeah, initially, Charles Grant, they were able to get him, but because the Saints were up in press coverage, they just weren't able to quite get on the edge with that play. But Mike Smith knows that at this point in the ball game, I mean, a field goal would be nice. It's been a nice drive, but. Overall the Falcons have been pretty good down here in the red zone this season. Can play this drive. It's second and nine. Blitz coming. Redmond throws. Pass complete. Gonzalez has a chance to run. First and goal. Ball came out but he was clearly down. Just as he crossed the five yard line. Well the Saints decided to bring pressure and, that, and so they were all one on one. And they were one on one here with Tony Gonzalez and Darren Sharper and Gonzalez is able to make him miss normally when you got a guy running like that someone can come in from behind and knock it loose Velma makes the tackle but the ball comes out after he goes to the ground. 
and see if it came out before he was actually down and he was clearly down before that ball got loose. First and goal. Snelling. Powers his way for the touchdown. Basically an inside drill, and who can who, who can hold up? And that offensive line for Atlanta, they were able to get enough of a push and a good drive there by Atlanta to tie this thing up if they're able to get this extra point. Remember a missed extra point by the Saints earlier in this game. That means that Bryant ties it. You just never know, do you? 12 and 0 against 6 and 6. And the Falcons have tied it at 23. Today's game on Fox is sponsored by Van Heusen Pro Football Hall of Fame Fans Choice. By Chevy, put us up against anyone and may the best car win. And by Bud Light, with the just right taste that's not too heavy, not too light, the difference is drinkability. Snelling pounded it in from four yards away. Chris Redman has really put together a nice afternoon. An 11 play drive. 79 yards in this game is tied at 23. And now the high powered Saints offense will get it back. This one will be returned by Roby. And Roby cannot get to the 20. Teams have been mixing it up since this day started. I said it, Troy, going to break, and I'll say it again. You know, just when you think you have this league figured out, you talk about all the injuries for the Atlanta Falcons. They deserve a lot of credit for not mailing this one in today. They played hard, and they've not tied the game. Well, there's no doubt, and they're and they're doing it with a lot of guys that are banged up. Of course, the Saints are as well. But the big play in this game, the touchdown over the top to Jenkins at a time when the Saints looked like they were about to run away with this thing gave them some confidence. Now you touched on it Joe the Saints and more importantly Drew Brees the number one rated quarterback in the fourth quarter. This is not uncharted territory for them. Brees rolls out and hits Henderson who drops it. Coleman got there late. Devery Henderson had it for a moment and lost it. Let's go back to what is now a key play. The missed extra point by Garrett Hartley. And now the second year pro out of Oklahoma. Sure that's running through his mind in what is a tie game with 1247 left. For Hartley only his second week active. Breeze over the middle hits Colston. And Marcus Colston has a Saints first down. There have not been easy games every week. The Saints team has been tested. They trailed a Miami club 24 to 3, down by 10 after three quarters in that game, won it by 12. Last week trailed 30 to 20 in the fourth quarter. Redskins missed a 23 yard field goal with a minute 52 left, and the Saints won in overtime. They were challenged by Carolina, but they're 12 and 0 and tied with a 6 and 6. Atlanta Falcons here. Handoff to Pierre Thomas. And on first down, he gets nine. Let's go to Kurt for a game break. New England trying to end that infamous two game losing streak, hosting Carolina. Tom Brady hooking up with Benjamin Watson on a five yard score. New England has his first lead of the afternoon, 14 7 late in the third. Go toward Pan. All right, Kurt. Low scoring game there. Another first down for the Saints. Again, it's Pierre Thomas. He gets five here. 
Tell you, so often, you know, in the past, Drew Brees has had to be the guy who's moved the chains for for this Saints team. And, you know, a nice luxury when you're able to run the ball the way they have this year, and particularly on this drive. They come out, you know, they get the first down. And on first down, they pick up nine yards. They come back with it again. This is an entirely different offensive attack from the one we've seen in previous years. That's David Thomas, the tight end in motion. Breeze finds him. And number 85 is out to the 47. Stephen Nicholas made the stop. Next week, it's a Fox NFL Sunday doubleheader. As we look at the early games, 49ers at the Eagles, Falcons, Jets, Bears at Baltimore, Cardinals at the Lions. Troy Pam and I will be in Pittsburgh for the fading Steelers against the Green Bay Packers who have their hands full today in Chicago. Down by a point in the fourth quarter there second down and six for the Saints. Breeze throws that's Colston. How much forward progress it's enough for a first down. Grimes on the stop. Well we, we've seen that the Falcons have only gotten three hits today on Drew Brees no sacks and they're playing a lot of zone coverages and when they do these receivers are so good at recognizing where the holes are and then sitting down in those holes and just letting Drew Brees put it on a Marcus Colston now a couple of times on this possession has just sat it down right in the hole which is what you want to see as a quarterback he turns his numbers you just put it right on him pretty easy stuff for Drew Brees right now. See if it's enough for a first down. The Saints got a really good spot. And it is. By almost the length of the football. First down, New Orleans. You know, it's a fine line. You see Mike Smith, and you know, do you bring pressure and then go man to man on the outside and, and potentially give up a big play as we've seen, you know, what's happened with the Saints on their side defensively, giving up the big plays to the Falcons. Or do you methodically make them go down the field? And you know where this spot was. You know, his question. You know, right there, he started to extend it, but but I don't think he ever got close to it. He could have challenged that one. I agree. Really wasn't that close. As Reggie Bush gets it to the 45, Abraham on the stop again of two. So instead of third down and a foot or so, it was a first down, and now it's second down and eight. And in a game like this, of course, a, a, a tie ball game, and you know, do you want to challenge that and, and risk losing a timeout when you may need it, thinking that well, on third down they would more than likely pick it up anyway. I mean, those are all the things that have to factor in before making a challenge. On second down, Breeze to his left slings it out to Henderson, who's got another Saints first down, and they can make it look so easy. By spreading the ball around you focus on one area and somebody else will jump up and get you this is an offense. That's had. One player after another put up basically a career year and as you mentioned Troy. They played for the most part without Lance Moore. who was their top receiver a year ago and he will be back next week. Yeah, and I asked Drew Brees before the game I said you know because Sean Payton said we've got to find a niche for him. I mean they've been playing so well without him. You know, playing, and Drew Brees said, "Oh, we'll we'll find a spot for him. <laughs> that won't be hard." There he is in uniform. He worked out before the game. Here's Thomas to the 35. Picked up a yard. Corey Beerman, number 71, made the stop for the Falcons. Uh, and Croy Beerman, this guy has really been a good player for them. One of the more consistent players that they have on the defensive side of the ball. And not only does he do a good job of getting after the quarterback, but he is also a heck of a special teams player. In fact, he's tied with the team lead in special teams tackles and pretty versatile player for them. Fifth round pick from Montana last year, second and nine. Here's Reggie Bush. Big hit. 
That was Deku. Gain of five, and it'll be third down coming up for the Saints, who are in field goal range for Hartley. You know, Dave Thomas, he's been having to take on that fullback role because of Heath Evans going down, and he does a good job securing the edge. And the one guy then you can't block is that guy right there, Thomas Deku, the safety. And he has to be the one who comes up and fills the hole and makes a play, and he did it nicely there. Third down and four. Breeze throws and completes to Reggie Bush. What a nice day for Reggie Bush, who played last week for the first time after missing a couple of games with a bruised knee. And number 90, Lawrence Sidbury, he tried coming off the line of scrimmage and, and tried to be in coverage there on Reggie Bush, mixing it up. And then of course, you got Nicholas coming over the top. It looked like Sidbury was supposed to try to get a jam on Reggie Bush coming out of the backfield and, and just was not able to do that. Extra offensive lineman Zach Streif on the left side for the Saints. This is Pierre Thomas right, takes right. it right up the middle game two. Here was that last play on Sidbury right here and you're going to see Reggie Bush who then comes out of the backfield and you know, he wants to try to get a jam on him. He fails to, but he was getting some help by Nicholas over the top. And when you see something like that, there's some tendencies then that the Saints have shown that in this part of the field, when he's offset, they want to get the ball in his hands. And so if you're able to jam him, but at least they had Nicholas there to give help. Second and eight. Thirteenth play of this drive. Penalty flag could be a free play. There's another flag. Two separate fouls on that play. Looked like David Thomas, the tight end, was interfered with. It could be an offside at the beginning of the play as well. There are two fouls on the play, both against the defense. Offside, defense number 95 in the neutral zone at the snap. His penalty is declined. Pass interference, defense number 28. His penalty is accepted. Automatic first down. The call against Deku is the one that counts. Yeah, boy, they are they are calling it close because Dave Thomas is the one who initiated the contact coming off the ball and drove Deku off the ball. And then you saw the right arm by Deku, but you know they a lot of times a defensive back will get away with that and that's that's tough for the Falcons because right there they were in second and long on that play they would have been looking at third and long if they don't get that call instead it's first down at the 10 breeze in trouble throws it away ends up on the ground and was pressured by Abraham. Drew Brees does not make a lot of mistakes, does he? And now they're going to throw a flag. Well, they shouldn't unless there was just no receiver, but I thought there was. Because you can throw it out of the back of the end zone and still be in the tackle box as the quarterback. Intentional grounding. Offense number nine. His penalty carries a loss of down. It will be second down. The key is whether or not there's a receiver in the area of where it was thrown. And there was there was the receiver back. As you saw crossing the back line. But it's OK to be in the tackle box as the quarterback and throw it through the uprights through the back of the end zone as long as there is a receiver in the area. But they deemed that that receiver was not underneath the flight of the ball and that's why they called intentional grounding. So now it's second and goal with the ball back at the 20. That's what I was saying he doesn't make any mistakes he takes an intentional grounding. As the pass is too high for Meacham. Coverage out there by Christopher Owens. Yeah, I think what we've seen here from Atlanta on this drive is pretty much what they've tried doing throughout this game is just play soft, not give them too many one on one matchups for big plays. They're going to move the football. And then once they get down to this part of the field, somehow we've got to be able to step up and make a play on this down, on third down, to keep them from coming away with a touchdown. On 
third down and goal it's Pierre Thomas and the play is made by Chauncey Davis and this Atlanta Falcons defense did exactly that Yeah, the Saints have had some success on on third and long with the screen pass they come back to it this time to Pierre Thomas but as you said Joe Chauncey Davis he sniffed that one out right away and was not full well this is no cinch for Garrett Hartley <laughs> not after missing the extra point he's hit from 33 this from 38. So he's two for two as a missed extra point in this game, but Hartley puts the Saints, the undefeated Saints, up by three. Guy who manages this potent offense for the Saints doesn't like coming off without getting the ball into the end zone. At the end of the drive, it's a 15 play drive, 63 yards, covering eight minutes, eight plus minutes off the clock, and hardly good from 38. Here is Weems on the return. And Eric Weems gives Atlanta a head start. And it's not Matt Ryan, it's Chris Redman. Back to work. His Falcons down by three to the undefeated Saints. Falcons will start with a Wildcat from their own 36, and they reverse it to Weems. Nothing there, and the plays made by Randall Gay. What a start to this drive for the Falcons as they trail by three, a loss of 12 yards. Yeah, that's not what they needed. They try to come with the Wildcat, give it to Weems, and the Saints are waiting for it. And you know, so here you've got good field position to start this drive, and you take a huge loss on first down. That's one Mike Malarkey would like to have back. This is a Falcons team that's been able to move the ball during the course of the game against New Orleans and now the first turnover of the day as Vilma gets the pick. And just like that the Saints are so much closer to a 13 and 0 start. Well it goes back to the first down call because now you've got a quarterback that feels the pressure to try to get the ball down the field and then you've got a linebacker in Vilma that isn't going to respect any kind of play action. He's dropping back knowing that they've got to get the ball down the field and he undercuts the throw. I'm not excusing the throw here. Chris Redmond's got to do a better job of seeing that. But that sequence of two plays there was all set up by what happened there on the first down Wildcat that lost so much yardage. So Vilma gets his third interception in his last four games. And for some reason the Falcons started that possession with the Wildcat used it for the first time today. And that could be the beginning of their end in this effort against the Saints as Pierre Thomas carries it for five. The Saints are closer to 13 and 0. The Falcons are closer to a 6 and 7 record. And prior to that possession, Troy, the numbers in this game were so unbelievably equal. I mean, total yardage, run yardage, pass yardage. That's the first turnover of the game. It belongs to the Saints. The interception. And all Gonzalez can do is shake his head on the sideline. Second and five. Passes behind Henderson, makes the catch, and has a first down. Now Chris Redman had, has really played well. I mean, that's the first real mistake that he has made. And I mean, you see what the Saints have been able to do scoring this year a new team record. But the key right now, as we know, is you know, this thing's a long way from being over. And the Falcons, they were able to do it on the last possession, and now they have to do it here. And if they're able to force a, a field goal, you know, Chris Redman will get one more opportunity. So even with three games to go after today, already a franchise record. The points scored this season for the Saints as they hand the ball to Pierre Thomas. 
who pushes the pile forward on first down and a timeout is taken by Atlanta that is their first Thomas picked up four. Second down when we come back for the Saints we lead by three. Chris Redmond's thinking about the interception hoping that his defense can get a stop force a field goal get the ball back right now the Falcons have two timeouts remaining second down and seven for New Orleans with the ball just inside the 15. Play action from Breeze who flips it forward incomplete for Pierre Thomas. Well, Abraham gets some good pressure. Jermon Bushrod is expecting a speed rush to the outside, and he, you see him right here. Here's Jermon Bushrod, and then John Abraham starts up the field and comes underneath and is able to get the pressure then, along with Babineau. Well, that incompletion stops the clock with 2:18 remaining. A big third down coming up here, third and seven. Breeze has not been sacked yet today. He's dropped back 39 times. Down the middle, pass incomplete for Thomas. And so the clock stops at 2:14. The Falcons' defense gets a hold, and at worst, it's a six-point game. It was a great job there defensively by the Atlanta Falcons. You know, you come in and you've got the number one scoring offense in all of football, and you give them a short field after the interception. And you have to make a play, you have to force them to a field goal, and they're able to do it. Great job by that defensive unit. 33 yard try. And now they fake it. Brunel throws it. Short of the first down, and it's a three point game. With 2.07 left and two timeouts. Pass intended for Dinkins, but I don't understand the decision. Well, he had him open right away, but he held on to it. And he the reason he held on to it, let's see if whether or not now he's out of bounds. The reason he held on to it, he was he also had a it looked like Carl Nix. Yeah, there he is right back here going to the corner of the end zone. And Mark Brunel held it, hoping that he could get it into Nix. And then by the time he came back to Dinkins, it was it was a little late. Well, that for Brunel is first pass attempt since November of 2006. But instead of forcing Atlanta to get the ball down the field and into the end zone, now the Falcons are just a field goal away from tying this game with 207 left and two timeouts. Redmond another lease on life Snelling in the middle of the field is out to the 33 yard line and that'll take us to the two minute warning. Falcons will not go away the defense got a big stop. Atlanta has it down by three. Today's game on Fox is sponsored by AT&T, a better 3G experience. Two minutes left in this game, and the New Orleans Saints now will watch the Atlanta offense for the first down, the ball at their own 33. Trying to change this scoreboard as Redmond throws, and he slings it caught by Marty Booker. Booker good for nine. Plenty of time left. In case you're wondering Matt Bryant in his second week with the Falcons his career long 62 yards. While with Tampa Bay a couple of years ago here's a floater off the left hand of Roddy White incomplete. Go back and take a look at the fake field goal. Carl Nix is going to be right here at the end of the line and he's going to go to the flag. He's an eligible receiver. He's going to go to the corner. And that's who Mark Burnell is initially trying to get the ball to. And then he's late getting the ball out to Dinkins. You see Nix. I mean, they learn early. I mean, give me the ball. I'm open. He raises his hand. But he wasn't that open. But if Brunel had come out right away and hit Dinkins right at the start, it was an easy first down. Now, I don't know that the risk was worth it 
you know, Sean Payton decided I'm going to go for the throat right here. But as you said, Joe, now now a field goal ties as opposed to having to go for a touchdown. Here's Snelling. First down Atlanta. And a timeout taken by Mike Smith. And I think that timeout's awfully early. You know, sometimes you panic when you get into these situations. He had two timeouts left. You just picked up a nice gain, and you've got a minute and a half left. And you burn a timeout immediately when you've got a defense that is really on their heels. I agree with you. I, I, I don't like that timeout one bit. On the other side, New Orleans has two timeouts remaining. We look at the division leaders in the playoff picture. Saints are undefeated, 12 and 0. Up by three here, Minnesota, Arizona, Dallas. But the NFC East is wide open with the top three teams there. The wild card leaders, Philadelphia, Green Bay, eight and four. Certainly in the hunt, Atlanta, six and six, and the Giants, seven and five. Giants host Philadelphia tonight. And now you better save that last time out for your field goal team. Redmond throws behind Gonzalez. Second and ten. You know the only thing you don't know about is I, I do know that that Mike Smith and the Falcons spend a great deal of time on two minute situations these types of situations both offensively and defensively and because Chris Redmond has not been playing that much I mean I know he's been working on it during the week but you know maybe he just feels that he doesn't have a full grasp of this two minute offense but but I doubt that's the case either. Redmond throws the pass is incomplete for Roddy White. He was open. A long throw by Redmond. White got his hands on it, couldn't make the catch. Yeah, just a little too far out there, but you know, still a ball that we see them make often. Or a catch that they make. Roddy White could have pulled that one in, but just a little bit too far out and too difficult. Now it's third down and ten. Saints are one win away from a franchise best 13 wins this season a 13 and 0 start and a first round bye in the playoffs Redmond sideline Gonzalez makes the catch and he is wrestled out by Shanley it'll be fourth down they were a little con confused the Saints were defensively as to how to handle Tony Gonzalez he split out and initially nobody went out with them and then eventually Shanley did and they got the one on one matchup. Now it comes down to this a fourth down play. It'll be fourth and a couple. Well usually in this situation they're still looking for Tony Gonzalez and he's right here. Redmond underneath the catch is made and he did not make it Snelling was knocked back by Vilma who has an interception and now makes a fourth down play and with that the New Orleans Saints will start 13 and 0 Falcons went to the well one too many times they ran this you see Vilma right in the middle they went to this on the first down play and they got a big gain there to Snelling and they've had a couple of plays in this game with that underneath crossing route coming out of the backfield and this time the Saints were expecting it on fourth and short and Vilma who was soft he just drove on it and saw it the entire way. All the owner can do Arthur Blank is shake his head. Sean Payton and the New Orleans Saints have survived another right, scare. Right. Falcons have one timeout remaining. Saints can run it out for New Orleans as you look ahead. They host Dallas next week. They host Tampa Bay then at Carolina. And if there was any confusion as to whether the Saints if they were in a position to go for a 16 and 0 regular season record. Sean Payton put an end to that. He said what am I going to go in and say to guys. Well we're here but we're going to rest players they'd get up and strangle me if we have a chance we'll go for it and the players don't want to talk about it and they want to go for it and congratulations to Sean Payton and the New Orleans Saints going to 13 and 0. it is hard to win in this league and to to put the string together like they have it is awfully impressive hard to do and it doesn't get any easier that is the best start in team history Saints have never won as a franchise. 13 games in a single season and the Saints have now clinched a first round bye. 
They're 13 and 0. The Falcons are 6 and 7. And Drew Brees and Chris Redman meet in midfield. We'll take a break, come back here, and then get you to bonus coverage on this Sunday, December 13th, as the Saints move to 13 and 0. Back after this.